against dudes he could beat up. Yeah. They tried, but he was such a gap in the in the and he was such a gap in the wrestling area yeah. that he couldn't do it. Well, you know it's I mean? also not like boxing where this is my feeling on that. It's like if you like, I don't think the guy's afraid to fight, and I don't think the guy's afraid to learn. But you can only learn so much. And I think if you're in a situation like a boxing situation, they would take a guy who's a prospect and people who would be intelligent people that were, you know, thinking about the future would invest time and money in this guy and slowly build him up, slowly give him the fights that he needs to make him look good, the fights that he needs yeah. to test his, his yeah, wrestling. Yeah, of course. And, and the guy's older, yeah. guy's older, you just kind of put him right in there. Well, Let's it's, do it's also that mixed martial arts model is very different than the boxing model. The mixed martial arts model is get in there, and if you get offered a shot at the title, fucking go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you, there's... That this, makes sense. It yeah. makes it more exciting for the fans, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a more hectic, breakneck pace that the, the little storyline, if you want to call it that, they go. You know, yeah. all of a sudden, this is happening, this is happening. Oh, I'm checking out my Google. You know, everyone yeah. gets involved with, with the sport. Like you know? Shamar Bailey. You know who Shamar Bailey is? No. The kid who was on The Ultimate Fighter. Oh, yeah. Really good wrestler. Did, very athletic kid. He gets uh, his first fucking official fight in the UFC, Evan Dunham. Oh, yeah, tough guy. Evan Dunham, it's like he was like a couple steps away from the title shot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Evan Dunham is you know a high level you know guy, and Shamar. I mean, it was a tough fucking fight, a real tough fight because Shamar Bailey is tough as shit, dude. Yeah, yeah. The guy took a ton of punches to the face, but it was like real obvious that like he really shouldn't be fighting a guy at this level yet. He should be building up to that level, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, so. That's uh, up to their manager, right? Yeah, it's, all, it's up to but, their, their... Well, that's what I was going to ask you. How do you make that decision? Like, how do you make the decision? I mean, there's, there's a decision where, you know, you got to test them, you got to see what happens. Yeah. And then there's the other school of thought where, like, you know, no, you've you, you got to make sure that you know exactly what level he's at and know exactly what level the opponent's at so you can ensure that he's going to have a long career. Yeah. But you can ensure that he develops properly. Like, how do you break that down in your head? There's so many variables there. Yeah. You know, so could use a great example for, first off, he wasn't making any money. So he couldn't really train properly. Over a 10-week period, um, we had five fights fall through. People look him up and go, nope, I'm not fighting this guy. Yeah, and if you don't know who Sokaju is, he's a fucking crazy powerful judo dude who made a big splash in Pride. In Pride, everybody thought he was, like, going to be the second coming. When he knocked out Hajirio with a wrist, <laughs> he, like, wrist him in the face. <laughs> I heard you say this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, he did yeah. We, we were talking about this weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we were so talking well. about... We were talking about, uh, you know, tough guys that yeah. somehow or another it just didn't click for them. Mm. You know, they just start off real good. Like the Arona fight. God damn, when he knocked out Arona. Jesus fucking Christ. It was like, who's going to stop this guy? I mean, you know, he, he like looked like this freak athlete, man, who just, when he hit Arona with that uppercut and blasted him backwards to put him out, I was like, Jesus. He's like, he's a fucking threat. Mm. But then it just doesn't happen, man. He get, gets in there against the top Top level competition, and he just can't keep it together. How well, you, well, that was top level competition. Those two fights, Arona was yeah, yeah, what, probably top three or four guy at that time. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think there was a big difference between when he fought in Pride and when he fought in uh, the United States? I think that, and I mean, Jay's can speak to this too. We used to, I think, the experience of getting famous and the pressure that comes with winning big fights is a lot. And it's such a huge part of this game. Is that can guys deal? Now forget all the fighting stuff. Because you go into the UFC, Joe Silva is not gonna. I know, I've asked. He's not going to give you easy fights to go along. You go to the UFC, right. you have to be prepared to fight anybody. That's what makes it cool. Nobody gets brought along in there. Either yeah. you're going to go make it or you're not. And we're going to find out real quick, and this is why we, get, we all get so excited about it. That That is one way to look at it, but the other way to look at it is that if a fighter wanted to develop to his utmost, the best way to do it would to engineer it. And that someone, you know... Would be able to, yeah, you know. I'm look. I'm just playing devil's advocate. No, we're, we're, no, no. Obviously, talking, I support the talking, UFC even, way of doing it, but yeah, even, even talking on, it. even talking on, like the Ultimate Fighter, mm -hmm. yeah, like watch tonight. Okay, the, okay. The, we pick the we pick the um, the fighters. We pick the fighters, and and this first episode builds up to the first fight in the house. Mm -hmm. Now, picking the correct fight and the correct fighters, you know, you always want to try to get your guy a path. But guess what? When the competition's high, there is no path necessarily. Right. You know what I mean? Like right. you want oh this guy, but styles do make fights. You know, you want to pick two dudes. If you want to get your fighter to fight this dude, you know, because more than likely his style's gonna gonna you know prevail. But you know, uh, mixed martial arts, anything can happen. You know, like that night is a different night. You know what I mean? Is that how frustrating is that to coaching guys? Is it, what is that like? Oh yeah, you? I liked it a lot, but yeah, it gave me a newfound respect for Ryan's job because I was like, Ryan just got to yell at me. And I was like, <laughs> whatever, he just fucking tell me to ground a pound. Like I got it, bro. Just tell me what to do. But but like, uh, 
I, once you do it, you're like, oh, God, this is my whole brain. Like, ah, I'm like, just why am I thinking about this dude in the shower? Like, I'm just like, when I'm in the shower, I'm thinking about, oh, man, I got to teach this guy this move, or I got to make sure he does this. I'm like, oh, why am I stressing? Like, it's my kids. It never like, has. Yeah, and then, I, but, but, man, you only got to do it with one dude, man. You're lucky. It's hard. <laughs> you got to really focus on me. But, like, but, but, but Jason said, too, it's like when you start looking at styles and how these things match up, go back to Sokaju. It was a safe fight for us because he got paid decent. He had no money. And we were paying him every month. Couldn't yeah. get any fights. Yeah. And we looked at, um, um, what's his name? Rogerio. It's okay. He's got good boxing. We were pretty confident on Sokaju's boxing. The game plan was to go, the game plan was the fight. We did that same thing over and over again for six weeks. With the thought being is you'll take him down to the ground. Worst case scenario for him here is he'll get submitted. Well, he's not supposed to win anyways. He's not going to get hurt. He makes a bunch of money. He gets his name out there. And we thought that he was going to go win that fight too. So you start to look at who's the, the matchup's going to be, how those styles match up against each other, upside and downside, and weigh it out. Same with King Mo when he fought in um, Sengoku the first time. Took a fight against Travis View on six days' notice. Well, I knew what Mo was capable of, and Travis View wasn't a dangerous threat on his feet. He wasn't going to submit Mo from his back, go out there and shoot a double leg. In my mind, there the worst case scenario was okay, he'll have a boring fight and he'll be labeled a boring wrestler. You know, no one wants to see him. But for what they paid him a lot of money for that fight, risk or reward, it made a lot of sense. It's also hard for guys when they first break in from other sports too, right? It's, I mean, how, how hard is it for, for a guy like Mo who comes in from wrestling and is, you know, just elite at an elite level of wrestling? Mm-hmm. And then now all of a sudden he's got to deal with striking. Now all of a sudden he's got to deal with shit that maybe he's not as good at, you know, as, as his, his, his key moves, you know? It just depends on the guy. I mean, Jason...